So it's another day and it's another processor to test. Today we have the G3258. It's a dual core Pentium processor from the Haswell generation and it overclocks like a champ. So let's see how it stacks up to those other processors we've been testing lately. testing platform is a little bit different than it has been over the past couple of processors we've tested in the 5400K and the 860K, both those were from AMD. Now, being an Intel processor, obviously we need an Intel motherboard, and since this Pentium processor is unlocked, I did want to pair it with an overclocking motherboard, in this case, an ASUS Z97 board. Now, the base frequency of the G3258 is 3.2 gigahertz, but they overclock amazingly well, partially because Haswell already overclocks well anyways, but also because it's a dual core, it doesn't actually generate that much heat. So with overclocking, I was able to get my 3258 to run at 4.5 gigahertz and under load, the temperature was just 45 degrees Celsius. So this chip is a very low temperature chip and it allows you to really push the overclock um, up into that range that you would really see with things like the 4690K or the 4790K, um, up into those frequency ranges with just the stock cooler and keep those temperatures very under control. But aside from the platform change, the test bench remains largely unchanged. We still have four gigabytes of RAM to keep things consistent, as well as the same GTX 660. So today we're moving away from the potato graphs and we're just gonna compare the G3258 straight up against the 860K and the 5400K in those same four games that we We've been looking at recently to see how well this budget solution stacks up against other budget solutions on the used market. Let's go! And first off is League of Legends where the 3258 does sort of flex its muscle a little bit as it was clocked significantly higher than the 860K which was only a 3.8 gigahertz versus the 4.5 gigahertz of the Intel product and we saw an average of 153 and a 1% low of 104, the 0.1% low also staying above 60 at 86. Moving on to Overwatch was a little bit more of a mixed bag with the average favoring the 3258, however the 1% and 0.1% lows did favor the AMD product there. Um, this is sort of a toss up, they're both really good experiences in Overwatch on medium settings at 1080p. Skyrim on the medium preset was a similar story. Both of them averaged 60 FPS, both the 860K and the G3258. The 860K once again did win out in 1% and 0.1% lows, again likely favoring the four cores over the dual core. And then we come to GTA 5 on normal settings with anti-aliasing off. Now the 3258 does turn in a slightly higher average of 57 versus the AMD's 53, but the 1% and 0.1% lows do tell the story here. The G3258, much like the 5400K, had an incredible amount of stutter. Unlike the 5400K, the 3258 was able to actually render out the scene properly. It just wasn't a playable experience because the stuttering was so great. You would get about half second of completely fluid gameplay, followed by a couple seconds of extremely stuttery gameplay, which results in the 3258 turning in a very respectable average FPS score just really bad on the 1% and 0.1% lows so the AMD 860K takes home the easy win on this title. And then there's platform cost to consider. If you're concerned about overclocking these processors, as you really should be because they are unlocked and that is mostly free performance, the AMD products here give you a lot lower of a platform cost, largely because those Z97 boards are still quite expensive even on the used market. In fact, the CPUs, the G3258 and the 860K are roughly the same cost at around $50 right now, but the overclocking motherboard that you can pair them with on the cheapest end for Intel is around $70, whereas you can find overclockable motherboards uh, for the AMD product at about $30, giving the platform total cost about a $40 edge for AMD's 860K over the G3258. And those platform costs combined with the stuttering issues that we saw in GTA 5 seem to give the clear win to the 860K over the G3258. 
So I guess it's sort of conclusion time. With the 860K on the market at roughly the same price point as the G3258, I can't recommend anyone actually picks up the 3258. Aside from the platform cost of getting on the 860K versus the 3258 uh, being cheaper because those motherboards that allow you to overclock on AMD's platform are just cheaper than Z97 boards are right now. It's also a matter of quad core versus dual core. In highly single threaded games and workloads, the 3258 will run circles around the 860K, but in games like GTA 5 that clearly take advantage of a couple extra cores, uh, those games will favor the 860K all day long. And even though the 3258 technically had a higher frame rate, the stuttering was unbearable as you saw on the 1% and 0.1% lows in that particular game. And that's an experience that you'll likely have with other games as well. Not by any means all your games, but some of the more modern games. And that's sort of a big deal. You see, in computing terms, we talk a lot about future-proofing a product, but when you're buying on the used market, you're not really worried about future-proofing it. You're actually more worried about now-proofing it, and that's something the G3258 isn't quite able to do. So let me know in the comments down below what type of processor you're rocking in your budget build. Is it a G3258 like this processor, or is it something else like the 860K? Let me know what your budget gaming PC is in those comments down there. Also, if you like this content, you can give me a like, share, subscribe down below. Those help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.